So I want to take a few minutes today to talk a little bit about why I will not use the GitHub Copilot so-called AI pair programmer. This video is inspired, though it is not a response to a video made by uh, Engineering Man over on his channel. You should check him out. I'm an occasional consumer of his content. And he raised some very good points about why he does not think one should use this particular tool. I don't know what you should do, but I'm going to tell you why I will not be using this particular tool. Before we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that my Udemy courses are on sale right now, links in the description. If you would like to learn how to turn papers into code, go ahead and check that out. Now let's talk a little bit about why I think this is not an appropriate tool for most people, though there are some caveats to that, which I will get to at the end. And my main gripe boils down to a couple of reasons. So the first reason is that a while back I did a video on expertise. In particular, expertise is a sliding scale. Uh, there is no state of being an expert. There is simply the process by which one acquires more knowledge, more competence, more brilliance in a particular field. Now, tools like this may be useful in some cases, uh, but in general, for most people, you're trying to circumvent the process of going from a beginner to an advanced programmer. Now, of course, this works in all manner of fields. Uh, it isn't just for Python. It's for really just about any language. So this applies to web developers, backend developers, pretty much any type of developer there is. And one should always be striving to move up that scale from beginner to advanced. And once you're advanced to, you know, be really pushing the limits of your particular field to become a leader in your craft. This tool flies in the face of that because it does some of the work for you. And it does so in a way that after you read it, you may say, okay, yeah, that's obvious, but you don't really learn anything from it. The reason you don't learn from it is because you didn't write it. You didn't code it. There's an old adage and something I subscribe to is that if you can't code it, you don't understand it. And so if you're relying on this particular tool to handle a lot of the heavy lifting for you in writing software, what do you really understand? Now, you may argue that, Phil, this is just like Stack Overflow, and indeed it is just like Stack Overflow, and I'm not a big fan of that either. Now, don't get me wrong, I think Stack Overflow does have its place, and I do use it on occasion. The place for Stack Overflow and similar tools is when you encounter a specific problem, when you thought through your solution to some uh, algorithm or whatever it is you're trying to implement, you reach a roadblock where you can't quite figure out how to do something, or perhaps you've already solved the problem, but you want to know a more elegant way to do it. Then you can ask the question on Stack Overflow or probably go find someone else who has done the same thing and read through the top solution as well as some of the other solutions to see the thought process behind the optimum way to solve it, perhaps the most Pythonic way, perhaps, uh, or some other solution you didn't even think of, you know, what is the thought process behind that? And that way it augments your understanding, it augments your learning, it helps solidify your knowledge and actually make you a better programmer. Stack Overflow is a tool that can help you become a better programmer provided you use it in the correct context. What would not be correct is to simply go to Stack Overflow and copy and paste code. Now, not only will it probably not work, it won't work in a way that you do not understand because you did not code it up. It's one thing if you write some code and it doesn't work, you can go back over it and say, okay, my thought process was this, and it doesn't work, and the failure mode is that, therefore, I made some error in my chain of reasoning that I can address because, well, I know that chain of reasoning. If you're copying somebody else's code, you don't know their chain of, uh, chain of thought, their reasoning, and so you're really kind of stuck um, trying, to, <laughs> trying to troubleshoot somebody else's code where you have no idea what they were even thinking. Heaven forbid they didn't use descriptive variable names or function names as well. So in a nutshell, a tool like this, a tool like Stack Overflow, becomes a crutch for those that really don't know how to program. It circumvents the learning process and keeps you down. It keeps you from being a better programmer. Now, the second problem I have with it is that for me personally, one of the hardest parts of programming is not writing individual functions. It is uh, constructing code in such a way that it is self-consistent, that it is logical, and that it is extensible. So having a good solid structure to your program, a good flow where each function handles one particular thing, doesn't modify things it doesn't need to, uh, and you maintain... Uh, pretty good adherence to the fundamental principles of computer science, uh, which may be a little bit lacking for people that specialize in data science and artificial intelligence, but you should always be um, mindful of proper computer science principles and trying to adhere to them. Now, this particular tool may be able to give you a, uh, particular, a single function, but doesn't have insight into the broader context of whatever program it is you're trying to write. And so it may not be writing code that is internally consistent within the framework of everything else that 
you are writing. And so it can trip you up in some subtle ways, uh, particularly with respect to the design of the program, that make it a little bit harder to um, potentially to debug later on. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Now, who would this be a great tool for? Uh, so I think that if you're already really far up that scale of expertise, then this could be a good tool for you. Reason being, you know, if you're John Carmack, let's say, you know what you intend. You can look at the code and say, okay, this will fit into the broader context of what I want to write. And, you know, this is going to be a type of function that you've probably written a dozen times. Uh, and so you have no issue inserting that into the into the program because you you don't need to rethink the the solution to every trivial little problem you've come across a hundred times before so if you're already an expert i don't know why you're watching my content thank you if you are but you could probably get away with using something like this i do not consider myself such and so i won't be using it because i i believe it will only hamper my learning process uh, and finally the third reason i didn't allude to this earlier but the third reason i don't like it is because he uses visual studio code now this may seem petty to you uh, but for those of us that were uh, kids in the 90s uh, had to live through Windows 95, 98, XP. Uh, Windows is really not, uh, Microsoft in particular, is not a good company. Everything they touch turns to crap. They have the brown touches, I like to say. And everything they touch is just trash. LinkedIn went to trash after they touched it. Skype went to trash after they touched it. Their code editor, who knows what it's doing on the back end. You don't know uh, what their stuff is doing on the back end. You have no idea. And I don't particularly enjoy supporting such a company. I almost never boot into Windows, only on the rare occasion when I decide to do any gaming. Uh, and I don't recommend people use Windows in general. If you're doing data science, artificial intelligence, you should be using Linux and at the very worst Mac OS and certainly almost never Windows. All right, there you have it. Those were a few reasons why I will personally not be using this particular tool. And I don't recommend you do either, though. You know, if you find it helpful, by all means, go right ahead. Uh, if you think I'm wrong, leave a comment down below and let me know. With all of that said, I'm going to go ahead and leave it here. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments. I know that perhaps what I've said may be a little bit controversial to some of you. Perhaps some of you are already using this. If you have um, a different opinion, if you've used it and something I've said is misinformation, by all means, please correct me below. I don't like to spread misinformation, so correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, leave a comment, a like. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and I'll see you in the next video.